You know, there's a commercial that's on TV right now, and every time I see it, it makes me smile. But for the life of me, I can't actually remember what it's advertising. In it, there are five short vignettes. And in the first four, there's a little girl. She's about seven or eight. She's cute as can be. And she is talking non-stop. She's talking about school and schoolwork and her soccer game and her friends and her sleepover party. And it just switches from scene to scene to scene. And this little girl never stops talking. But in the fifth vignette, the camera opens up and you can see who is listening to this little girl. And it's her father. And you can tell from the commercial that he has been listening all along. And by the expression on his face, you can tell he's been getting an earful. But you can also see by his face that he has nothing but immense love for his daughter. And so even though she's talking nonstop, her father is just gazing at her with love. Now, as this little girl matures, she's going to come to realize that conversation includes not just talking, but listening. And she's going to grow to understand that when she stops talking and she lets her father talk, that he's going to actually have some wise things to say to her. He's going to have some interesting things to tell her about life. And she's actually going to get to know her father as a person a little bit more. She just needs to stop talking and listen. Now, in the moment, we are presently in a series called The Way of Jesus. It's about the spiritual disciplines. And the spiritual disciplines are the things that Jesus uh, practiced while he was here on earth that kept him in communion with the Father. And he also modeled these things for us so that we can use them to keep us in communion with the Father as well. And so today, we are going to look at the discipline of prayer. And now, just like that little girl in the commercial, many of us are pretty good at the talking part of our conversations with God. But what about the listening part? Because prayer is a conversation. It's a conversation that includes both people speaking and both people listening. And the scripture that we're going to look at today is about a little child who's about the same age as the little girl in the commercial. And it's a little boy who learns to hear from God. And the story of Samuel starts with his mother, Hannah. And Hannah couldn't have children, but eventually she had a son. And she is so grateful to God for giving her this child that she actually takes him to the temple so that he will live the rest of his days there to serve God. And Samuel has a mentor named Eli, and that's the high priest. So let's have a look at this scripture. You can turn to 1 Samuel chapter 3. It's page 263 in the Pew Bibles ahead of you, but I know most of you have it electronically, so I'll just give you a moment to find it. First Samuel 3, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. 
Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here I am. What was it he said to you, Eli asked. Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, he is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. And Samuel's word came to all of Israel. So how did the people back then in the Old Testament hear from God? Well, most often it was from the high priest, and at that time it was Eli. So God would speak to the high priest, and then the high priest would speak to the people. And the Ark of the Covenant was in the temple, and that is where God chose to manifest his presence to the people. But we're told that at this time, the word of the Lord was rare. And the reason for that was, is that the people at that time really weren't that interested in hearing what God had to say. And Eli and his sons really weren't doing their jobs as priests. And so if Eli is not doing his job as a priest, God is looking for someone who will listen to what he has to say. And little Samuel, who's five, six, seven at this time, he lives at the temple. And he lives and eats and breathes religious life. He says his prayers. He knows his ancient scriptures. He lights the candles. But we're told that he has never had a conversation with God. Have a look at verse 7 there. It says, Samuel did not know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So how did that change? How was Samuel able to hear from God? And how can we learn to hear from God? Well, the first thing that needs to be done is to create space to hear from God. Three times God calls Samuel, and three times he runs to his mentor's room and Eli realizes what's happening, and he tells him, go back. Go back to your room alone. Now, we all have our eccentricities. And my husband has one that's endearing most of the time. He likes to see the stars. And I mean really see the stars. So every August, we have to pack up camping chairs in the car, and we go out to pit meadows, and we find a lonely road, and we put our chairs out, and we spend hours just looking at the stars. Uh, you know when they have that meteor shower every August. And then a few years back, uh, they said that you could actually see the northern lights from the lower mainland. So I have memories of walking along the Pitt River Dyke at 3 a.m., and there were no northern lights. <laughs> a couple years ago, we went to Haida Gwaii, 
And my husband was so excited. He was over and over again, oh, the stars are going to be amazing there. And so one night, he gets Vanessa and I up in the middle of the night, and he says, let's go to the northernmost point of the island. And you go, remember, that's up by Prince Rupert. It's almost up by Alaska. And so we drove up in the middle of the night, and we found this picnic table. And the three of us lay on our backs and looked up to the sky. And Vanessa and I were freezing. We had our coats and our black, uh, blankets, and our teeth were chattering. But we got to see the beautiful sky. You know, you need to get out of the city and get away from the light pollution if you want to see the stars. Our buildings and our cars and our TVs and those little light boxes that we carry everywhere with us creates this light pollution. And so if you go just a little bit out of the city, you go to Golden Ears Campground out in Maple Ridge, you can see the stars better. But the more remote you get, the more north you get, then you can see the most amazing things like the northern lights. You need to remove yourself from all the light pollution that you're surrounded in. Well, likewise, we need to remove ourselves from the sound pollution that we're in. Many of the spiritual disciplines that we're talking about in this series are to aid us in hearing from God. And silence is another of those spiritual disciplines. So you're actually getting two for one today, prayer and silence. Silence removes the noise pollution from our lives, and we need to remove these distractions so that we can hear from God. But why does silence make us so uncomfortable? It could be that without the noise, we are left with just our own inner thoughts. We have to face our inner lives and the chaos that is often found there. But God is known to speak in a still, small voice. And we need that silence so that we can reflect on what's going on in our lives, so we can hear from God because he wants to speak to us about what is going on in our lives. God called Samuel four times, four times before Samuel recognized his voice, before he knew it was God talking to him. Eli sent him back to his room alone. He needed to be alone to hear from God. God wasn't just looking for religious service from Samuel. He wanted a real relationship with real communication. And that's why I like our prayer room here so much. It's just upstairs. And if you turn your phone off, there is no noise distractions. Comfortable chairs, beautiful images on the wall, a book full of listening prayer activities. And yes, we can pray anywhere, can't we? But there's very few spots that we can get away from the noise pollution in our lives. And anybody can use it anytime. The second thing Eli instructed Samuel to do was to listen and to expect to hear. Samuel didn't recognize God's voice until he got into a posture of listening and a posture of expectancy. Eli told him, go back to your room, wait for God to call again, and when he does, you say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel listened. And God spoke. And you'll notice that the listening came before the speaking. Last week, I woke up before 5 a.m. I'm usually a pretty good sleeper, but I was up and I was awake. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to come to the church, start my day early, and I'll come into the sanctuary and, and pray for a bit. And I get here at 5 a.m. and the lights are on. And I walk into this room and there's a couple of people sitting in the pews. And then I remembered that there's a Korean church that rents this space in the mornings. So I come in and I sit down. And within a few minutes, all sorts of people start walking in. There was elderly people. There was people in business suits. They're obviously going to head to work after this. I was astonished. There was 80 of them. Yes, I counted. 80 of them who came in and sat in these pews. And no one spoke 
and no one prayed together, and no one sang songs. They just sat here in silence for an hour. And I found out that they do this five days a week. They weren't responding to a sermon or the, the words of a song that they were reflecting on. They come and they sit in these pews five days a week for an hour with just a posture of, speak, Lord, I'm listening. You know, Jesus' disciples asked him how we should pray. And in that last song we sang, there was the verses of those, the, the prayer. And here's what else Jesus said at that same time, Matthew 6. Jesus said, when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you even ask him. How can we know that God is speaking to us? Well, how did Samuel know? Well, he didn't at first. He had to experience hearing the voice of God. And none of us can recognize God's voice without practice, and so we need to understand the ways that God speaks to us. This past Thursday, our son left for Japan, and he's been living with us for a few weeks, getting ready for this trip, and he's been walking around the house saying Japanese words and phrases, and the Japanese language is not natural for him. You know, his ear is not used to uh, recognizing the Japanese words. But he's in Tokyo right now. He's being immersed in it. And eventually, his ear is going to get used to the language. And he's going to start recognizing words and phrases in that language. We need to be immersed in the scriptures. This isn't just some ancient text. We're told that the Bible is God-breathed. It's alive and it's active. And it is the primary way that we are going to hear God speak to us. When we saturate ourselves with the scriptures, our minds become full of God's heart and his will for us and for other people. And then as we go about our day, the Holy Spirit keeps bringing things to mind as we reflect on what we have read. Now, God also speaks to us through other people. A few weeks ago, I went to visit an elderly lady from our church. And about the same time, I knew that I was going to be speaking on prayer today. But prayer is a pretty broad subject. And so that morning, I had said to God, well, what would you like me to do with this message on prayer? So I'm visiting with this woman, and we had chatted for a while, and then it was time to go. And we were about to say goodbye, and she says to me, come close. I want to tell you something. So I leaned in. And then just seemingly out of the blue, she said to me, it is those who listen who are the ones who hear. And just chills went down my arms. And I exited her home, and I'm like, well, thank you, God. I will talk about that in the prayer message. God uses other people to speak into our lives. Another way to be in a posture of listening is to take note of reoccurring thoughts. You know, God had to call Samuel's name four times before Samuel was ready to hear what he had to say. When you're reading the scriptures, God might impress something on your heart. And then the next day or a week later, somebody says something that resonates with you about what God had said to you previously, and it's like confirmation. In fact, if you do feel like God is speaking to you, you can actually say to God, can you confirm that for me? Because God knows it's really hard for us to, to hear him clearly often. So when you get repetitive thoughts, don't brush them aside. Pursue them. That friend that keeps popping up in your mind, that might be God just saying to you, you know what, your friend really needs somebody to talk to. It's like when somebody mentions three or four times that they really love those cookies you make. 
And finally, you get the hint. They want some cookies. And uh, the question is, do you plan on doing anything about it? God keeps nudging us with what he has to say to us because he wants us to obey. So what do you do after you hear God speak? Well, you respond. Poor Samuel. God speaks to him for the first time, and he gets this harsh word of judgment that he has to go give to Eli, who's like a father figure to him. And you know, God had already spoken to Eli. If you look in the previous chapter, chapter 2, verse 27, it said that a prophet of God had come and spoken to Eli, and he said all the same things that Samuel had told him. And so what did Eli do with this information? Nothing. God had spoken to him, but he just wasn't interested in what God had to say. And in verse 31, God says, the time is coming when all this will happen, meaning it wasn't going to happen right away. Eli had time to repent. Eli had time to take action, but he didn't. And so Eli wasn't listening to God, so God used a louder voice with him, and he spoke the same words again through a small child. And isn't it fascinating that when Samuel comes and tells him this awful news, your sons are going to die. None of your descendants are going to live to a, an old age. Eli goes, okay, God knows what's best. He's almost apathetic about it at this point. Now, Samuel didn't want to share this awful news with Eli, but Eli said to him, no, obey God, tell me what he said. And so Samuel obeyed, even though it was hard. Eli heard, but he didn't obey. Samuel struggled to hear from God, but when he did, he obeyed. Throughout the scriptures, we see that God spoke to people in many different remarkable ways, right? There was a burning bush, talking donkey, a giant hand on a banquet room wall. Uh, God spoke to Paul through a, a blinding light and a voice from heaven. And then there was angels and visions and dreams. Well, what about when Jesus was on this earth? How come when we read the Gospels... We don't read about Jesus having any visions. Well, it's because God never had to grab Jesus' attention. God the Father and Jesus were always in perfect communion. Jesus was always in a posture of listening to the Father. And even though that's true, we also read that Jesus always went to be alone with the Father. He went up mountains, he got up early in the morning, slipped away out of the crowds and into the wilderness. Jesus sought the silent places to be alone with the Father. And while on earth, Jesus was guided by the Holy Spirit. And that same Holy Spirit is gifted to each one of us who are followers of Jesus. The Holy Spirit dwells in the lives of each person who called Jesus Lord. So God isn't in the other room. He isn't just in this church building. God is with us every moment of the day and night. He is always accessible. So if we're not hearing from God, then it's likely we're not listening. Because God is always here, and God always wants to talk to us. I'm going to read a verse from the Psalms, Psalm 32, 8 and 9. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. The Holy Spirit has no desire to treat you like a horse with a bridle. Do this. Go this way. He's not a taskmaster. 
God calls us his friends, his co-laborers. He wants to talk to us and teach us and counsel us. Samuel became so proficient in listening to God and hearing from God. We read in verse 19 that it said, God let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. That means that everything that God said to Samuel that he shared with the people came true. Every prophetic word. But that didn't just happen all of a sudden. That came from experience. That came from practice, from the time he was a very young boy. Do we take a posture of listening? You know, even when we go for a walk or we're driving in the car, turn off the noise pollution and just say, speak, Lord, I'm listening. And if he's not speaking, then maybe he is still waiting for you to respond to the last thing he asked you to do. To wrap up, I just want to talk about a podcast that I listened to. It's called Clear and Vivid by Alan Alda, the actor. And in it, he interviews uh, judges and artists and hostage negotiators and religious leaders. And at the end, or, and what they talk about is like communication and relating and empathy and compassion. And at the end of it, he asks the same seven questions to each person he's interviewing. And so it's interesting to hear their different responses. And question number four is always the same. It is, how do you stop a compulsive talker? And I think one of my favorites was this one guy says, well, I always just tell them they have food in their teeth because within a minute they got to rush off and fix their teeth. <laughs> but what surprised me was how many of these leader types would say, I don't know, I just get overwhelmed by the compulsive talker. A lot of times I just turn my back and I, I walk away. God will never do that to you. He is like the loving father from that commercial. And his love for you is so immense. He will listen and listen and listen. But he is also desperate to talk to you. He delights in talking to you. He wants that same communion Jesus had with him. He wants that with us. And sometimes he'll use dramatic means to get our attention because he wants to assure us daily that he loves us. He wants to give us wise advice. And he actually wants us to remind us of our sin, not to condemn us, but so that we can ask for forgiveness and so that we can seek him to help us um, stop doing those things that are getting in the way with our relationship with Jesus. Jesus came to earth to die so that we could be reconciled to God. And part of that reconciliation is the ability to hear from God. When God created humans, we are told that he walked and he talked in the garden with them. But that all changed when the humans started listening to another voice. Jesus came to reverse the effects of sin in this world. Jesus came so that we can hear the voice of God again. The presence of the Lord is here right now. He's within every person who calls Jesus Lord, but he's also here because the Holy Spirit is everywhere. And in this final time of prayer, I just want to read one verse, Ecclesiastes 5.2. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth, so let your words be few. So why don't we just sit in a posture of listening in this moment? And whether you want to say it out loud or just in your mind, I invite each one of you to say, Speak, Lord, I am listening.